and let's play together in the bright sunny weather. Phew. Excuse me. <laughs> I will be right back with more Nick Jr. <laughs> How big was it? Niccolo, 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 Dion. So what if the hours were toilet paper? Hey, so what if the hours were toilet paper? I don't know, Cephas. You'd be white. Do you have it? Hudson was searching for a Northwest passenger. Next, and right after that, Snick gets strange. You know, actually, <laughs> Kenan, I'm I, I'm kind of feeling strange already. Oh man, you've been feeling strange since the day you were born. Hey, Melissa Joan Hart, and you're watching Nickelodeon. Hi, I'm Jay Stutz, and this this is Chance. Welcome to Good Dog You, where I do the homework so you don't have to. Our first story follows a familiar path. You get a dog. You love your dog. You go to work to support you and your dog, and your dog doesn't like this one bit. That's what happened to an extreme with Kathleen and Jason Murphy. Their dog, Popcorn, loved being close to them and hated to be left alone. Her behavior has tested their neighbor's patience and has put them on the brink of eviction. See how a dog's actions can speak louder than words. Popcorn came into our lives because we were looking for a dog, so one day we finally said, okay, well, we're ready for a dog, so let's go out and look for a dog. And we went to the, to the Humane Society, and... Um, we saw her, and she was like huddled like in the, in the cage that they put the animals in, and she was she really was scared. Shaking she was so shaking so bad. And they wouldn't let us hold her, but I actually knew that she was going to be the dog for us, because when she, she, she wouldn't come to anyone else, and we went up to her cage, she came to us, and she started playing with us and everything like that, and we could tell that she was scared, but she was just so sweet and lovable that I said, we have to get this dog. And we put, we signed up on a waiting list, and five days later, she came home. We came up with the name Popcorn because she's always hopping around. She's energetic, as you can see. Definitely, if there's one thing I could change about Popcorn, it would be her separation anxiety. And we pretty much have clockwork the way our routine is, and she'll, she'll be able to tell that we're going to leave. We both get up at the same time, and we both do our ritual about getting up in the morning. She can tell our pattern and she gets very anxious and very nervous. And as soon as we're out the door, she'll react. She'll just be so worried that we're leaving that she'll just go nuts. She is scratched up part of the carpet from being inside our bedroom. She's taken up the linoleum in our bathroom and even dug through some of the cement. She's scratching really loud that the downstairs neighbor were always calling security. Actually, the neighbors complained so much that we got three separate eviction notices stating that if the behavior and scratching persisted, we'd be kicked out of our apartment. From my apartment, I can hear popcorn when she howls and she scratches heavy on the door, and she whines a lot. A lot of people have had it. They're just at the very end of their rope, and Popcorn will have to go if she doesn't get some training. I really love her, but things that she does, it just it's just impossible to bear with it, and we don't want to have to give her up because of that. Actually, we are at our wit's end, so I'm definitely hoping this will work. Well, I think lots of you have just about had it. I've found that separation anxiety is the biggest problem facing dog owners today. With people's busy schedules and tight timetables, our dogs are hungry for attention. It is frustrating. The closer and more intense our relationships are with our dogs when we are home, the greater anxiety that dog will feel when it's separated from you. This behavior can show up as many different but equally annoying ways like destroying things around the house, barking, whining, and scratching. You might think this is your dog's way of getting your attention, but it's not. Your dog's just venting out its frustration. It's a tough situation all around and is the leading cause of dogs being put into shelters or given away. And we don't want that, do we, Chance? 
The solution? No quick fix here. But it does involve addressing the boredom and excess energy in your dog and being a little more constructive with your time together. I visited the Murphys to help solve Popcorn's problem. You guys already know that popcorn's problem is a very serious problem, but it's a very common one as well. And it's going to take a little time for you to solve it, but it takes a lot less time than it does to find a new apartment if you guys get evicted. So the hope is in you guys being less parental, less reassuring, and actually being more firm and supportive in your leadership role. Okay. One of the things we address with separation anxiety is whether or not the dog is independent. Popcorn's a little bit afraid, a little bit afraid to be alone. So we're going to start with some independence training. I don't want you to encourage Popcorn to follow you around the house. Instead, I want you to teach her to sit and stay and watch you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I also know that she sleeps in the bed. Yeah. We, we don't want to allow her to do that. We want to show her that sleeping a distance away from no you is popcorn. not a negative. The way we go about doing that is leaving a leash near no. the bed. If she jumps on the bed, no. you want to put the leash on her, encourage her to her bed, and then praise her when she stays there. Stay. Now guys, we've talked about how we're going to make Popcorn stand on her own four feet and be independent and confident when you guys are home, but now we have to address the problem of when you guys leave, how she acts. We're going to start by going out and buying a couple of toys. Now these are rubber toys with holes in them that we can stick her treats in, and what this does is it occupies her time a lot more than balls or rope toys. I'm putting a little bit of kibble in this red one, and she's going to play with these a lot longer. So I'm going to put these down about 10 minutes before we leave. And hopefully, she'll get interested in these and not really care about what we're doing when we're leaving. Now, the first step in retraining is what are called mock exits. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go about our business. We're going to get our keys, get dressed, just like we would when we leave. But we're only going to step on the other side of the door when we leave, and then we're going to see how she acts, OK? So go ahead and go out. Go ahead. Bye, Papa. Okay, let's listen to see what she does. Okay, you're already here scratching. We, we need to show her that we're displeased. So what I want you to do, we're going to do a correction right now. I want you to open the door, clap your hands a couple times, use a low voice and say no, and then come right back out. Go ahead and give her a correction real quick. Okay. No, no. Good, close the door. Good, very good. Okay, now let's see if she calms down. And if she calms down, we want to go in and praise her now, okay? A couple more seconds. That's perfect. Now let's go in and praise her. She's been calm for a little bit. Good girl. Good girl. Good. Very nice. Now go ahead and stand up. We want to make sure that for about 20 minutes before we leave and 20 minutes after we come home that we're, we're not that emotional with the dog. A simple good is enough to show her that she was performing correctly. Then you go about your business and then after that period's over and she's leveled off the emotion of you guys coming and going, then you can praise her lavishly, okay? okay. I want you guys to exercise popcorn a lot as well. I want you to get rid of all that pent up energy and tire her out. That way she's a lot calmer when you guys are away. And on a final note, tell your neighbors that you're retraining popcorn here because they're going to keep you up to date on her progress when you guys aren't there. Uh, speaking of progress, we're going to give you guys a couple of weeks to work with her and then we're going to come back to see how things are going, okay? Good luck. Now remember Popcorn, the dog whose separation anxiety related behavior is threatening to get the Murphys evicted? Did the pooch learn to become calm and content? Well, we went back a few weeks later to check up. Here's what Jason had to say. I definitely see Popcorn improving. Uh, with each passing day, she gets a little bit better. I don't hear the scratching on the door as much. I listen intently on the door. Uh, I don't hear her bark as much. What's definitely helped with Popcorn is a lot of patience, uh, the toys definitely. Um, working with her night after night, not for too long because I don't want to, you know, overdo it with her. I'm glad to see progress. Keep up the good work, guys.
Welcome back to Birthday Live. Earlier today here in Orlando, a momentous moment for Lisa Gallagher. Just around noon, doctors in the OR wheeled her in for her C-section. I'm 33 weeks and four days, and I'm in here for the third admission to the hospital. I've been here at this time for 19 days. Um, I have low amniotic fluid, which puts me at high risk, so my OBGYN could not care for the rest of my pregnancy. I had to be referred to a perinatologist um, who specializes in high-risk pregnancies and those kind of um, different chromosomal problems, um, the low amniotic fluid, different things like that. We are going to just deliver it 33 weeks and four days now. We did an ultrasound yesterday and found out that um, the fluid level still remains low and the cord is about 45 percent wrapped um, around the neck, so barring any problems, he just felt that medically speaking it was best to go ahead for the health of the baby and for us to go ahead and take the baby. With having this problem, we kind of got knocked out of some of the enjoyment in that last trimester. Um, we wanted to do pictures, professional pictures, because I hadn't really taken many pictures at that point of my pregnancy. Um, I wanted my belly to be at the largest state possible for the pictures to put in the baby's room when he comes home. I am scared of the thought of a C-section. <laughs> I've had so many family and friends come to, to support and be here with us. <laughs> They're going to be out there and it's going to be good to be able to look out the window and, and see the faces of the people who care about you the most to come and be with you through such a, you know, a, a nerve-wracking and, and happy time. Participation. He's finally here and healthy. It's a miracle. And that it is a miracle. And we're going to go back now to Maricopa Medical Center in Phoenix, Arizona, where Rhea Blakely is standing by. Hi, Rhea.